Howdy y'all, my name is Brent Haverton, Mist Runner, Tomwood the Mist Runner Tribe, and today I want to talk to y'all about Muru. Muru is regarded as the toughest boss in the world, period. Hands down. Oh, but Brent, isn't Kill Jaden the last boss of Sunwell? Yep, he is. But Muru ends up being the harder wall for basically every guild. I'm going to show you the fight, and you might see why it's considered the toughest boss. There's a lot going on. A way that the fight was described to me was, to succeed on Muru, you need both finesse and punchmanship. Many other fights, say Brutalis, is more about punchmanship. Or a fight like Caligos, which is about finesse. And being in the right place at the right time. Muru requires both of these, full on, the whole time, the whole fight. Everyone needs to do their job correctly. There are tons of ads running around. There's a ton of damage going out. People need to not only use their damage rotation, but they need to use a bunch of their utility spells, crowd control, and so on, to succeed. It's not just a raw zug. You've got to use warlocks to enslave some stuff. You've got to... Stun things, interrupt things, spell reflect things, all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to walk you through the poll here and kind of explain what's going on. The way that we do this fight to set it up is you just have a hunter pull the boss and then feign. The reason they do that is because the boss these bones for about, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And it allows the raid to run in and get in position. That's me, Brent. It's a picture whenever I tab out. This was a, this portrait was done back when we were raiding in Molten Core. Been a long way since Molten Core, man. Alright, so. Consumes wise, I've got a flask on, because it's prong. I've got the stam food. Maybe it's the agility food, but it's one of those. I've fully scrolled up for this. We've done a bunch of attempts on Muru up to this point. This is not... The first time we're pulling this, look at all the bones on the floor. <laughs> We've been progging this for a good bit, and we're in the final hour of our raid day. So, we're going to see if we can get this boss down. I've sharpened my offhand here because there is a little bit of time that you get to dual wield on this fight, even as a tank. Muru itself, this little Naru thing, it doesn't actually hit stuff. It doesn't melee. It just does a bunch of spells and things. So you don't need a tank on Muru throughout phase one. So the hunter did a feign death and everyone runs into position. The boss does have a face and a butt, even though it's a Naru. So the side that I'm on right now would be the butt. And ads are going to come from that side where you can see the health stones and from behind us. There will be three humanoids each side. Two berserkers and a mage one. To open up the fight, I'm just getting my battle shout for my group. I pop some pumpkin soldiers, and I'm in berserker stance getting ready to devastate because Muru is not tanked. I'm just trying to get Sunders on it so everyone can do more damage. And we're going ham, but we're not using Lust yet. Just trying to get as much damage as we can. We have a paladin at the doorway there you can see. They put down Consecrate, and they're picking up those three ads, bringing them to the center. We have a bear tank who's getting the ads behind us, and they're also pulling them to the center toward Muru so they can cleave everything down. Now you can see in DBM, next void. In eight seconds, my job as a warrior tank is to find out where the void spawn's going to be. It's by that gateway. I put the shield on, put an iron shield on, and now I'm tanking the void sentinels. These void sentinels hit very hard. Very, very hard. And they also do a bunch of spells, and there's a shadow damage pulse as well. I'm not in full mitt, I'm about four to five pieces off full mitt, and I'm going to be switching to commanding shout for these. Whenever they die, there are a bunch of void spawns. There's a warlock macro people can use to enslave one, and it marks their target, which lets people know that that one doesn't need to be DPSed. And then every time there's going to be one of these gateways, I want to be on the void sentinel as soon as it spawns. And you might be saying, well, Brent, if those hit really hard, how come you didn't just go full mitt? The reason I didn't go full mitt is because for each of these, you need to build snap threat against all the healers that are pumping. 
Resto Shaman that are getting full big heals and crits and stuff with all their buffs, they generate a lot of threat. So if you're a little bit late to the Void Sentinel, or you don't connect very well with your attack on the Void Sentinel, then they can pass you in threat, and the Void Sentinel just runs into the healers and kills them, and you wipe. Anytime you lose someone on this fight, you're going to be losing either healing or damage, and it's probably going to be a wipe just because you need so much raw power to succeed. One thing about positioning, I'm positioning these Void Sentinels away from the group so that it doesn't do the Shadow Pulse on the group. I'm going over to the next gateway. I open up with the Shield Slam Heroic Strike pretty much every time, and then I start to devastate it, and I put Thunderclap Demo Shad on these. And I'm just watching for the Void Bolt cast, Void Blast, and I Spell Reflect Bitch that. That's 11k damage, sometimes 14k. That really helps the raid a lot. You're really shifting the fight with Spell Reflect, which is why we have the Warrior on the Void Spawn. Or the whatever. Void Sentinel. The spawns are the little ones. The spawns die pretty fast. Uh, usually they just AoE them down. You can also throw an Arcane Bomb on them, which silences them. There, I just died. Rip. That's how it goes. If the tank is not topped off going in to pick up one of those Sentinels, they can sometimes get a few hits and die if they don't happen to mitigate. So that's a wipe. And then for the next pull, let's just skip ahead here. Skipping ahead. And we've got it set up again. The hunter did the feign death trick. We're all in position. We start to devastate the boss. I have Battle Shout on, and I believe in that pull, I was doing Battle Shout. So for this one, whenever I'm on the Void Sentinel, so I want to do Commanding Shout. For some of our pulls, I did tank the three humanoids. You see those Berserkers and stuff? But we ended up having the Bear and the Paladin do it, because they have a really nice cleave threat with swipe hitting three targets, and there are three per side, and Consecrate obviously hits all three. Thunderclap and Demo Shout, they do hit three to four targets, but it's not as much threat as Swipe or Consecrate. And with these, you have the added utility of the Warrior being able to Spell Reflect, which takes damage that you would receive, and it converts it into damage done, because the damage goes right on back. So you see, this time I have Commanding Shout up, so I don't get insta-blapped. It gives the healers a little bit more of a buffer. Whenever these come out, I Thunderclap. I'm hitting Concussion Blow. And I'm looking for the next gateway. And whenever these come out here, I want to pull this away from the range group. Because they do a Shadow Nova pulse around them. And I don't want that to hit my team. So I pull it away. I park it somewhere. And I'm just doing my threat city business. Thunder Clamp Demo Shatter Up. Devastate. Shield Slam. Devastate. Spell Reflect that. 14k Spell Reflect. That's big. I War Stomp and I look for the next one. Where is the next one? There it is right behind me. I'm going to pick this one up. Iron Shield needs to be up all the time. These hit very hard. The difference in damage taken is something like 9k to 8k. If you have an Iron Shield up. If you look at my health up there in the top, you can see I'm taking a bunch of spell damage. 5.6k hit. Reflect. For the first pulls we were doing with this, anytime a tank had the Iron Shield fall off, they would be getting hit for 10k to 11k and they would die. So Iron Shield needs to be up all the time. And Commanding Shout is big. That gives you stability in tanking these. Thunderclap Demo Shout. I get that up quick. Basically for these, my objective is to open with Snap Threat like Shield Slam Heroic Strike. And then I get the Thunderclap Demo Shout and then I devastate it up. Thunderclap to get some initial threat. Sometimes I'll just tab taunt. Get some threat on these. And I'm not even messing with Muru. It's not my job. My job is to make sure the Sentinels get picked up right away. There's another one I'm kind of far. Watch the threat of this one. Okay, we got it quick. Sometimes it'll turn and it'll look at one of our healers. Because if the healers are casting in the room and you haven't hit it yet, they'll go for the healer first. But I got this guy. Bulwark of Azanoth is proccing. Still got Commanding Shout. Still got Iron Shield. Sentinels doing little stuff to them. Spawns. But now I'm looking for the next gateway. 
You don't want to stand in the darkness in the center there, that black stuff, because you can't get healing when you're in it. Thunderclap Demo shout on this guy. My commanding shout is about to run out. Will I be able to refresh it in time? Rogue Strike Devastate. And I did refresh it. Excellent. 22.4k health. Pretty good. Very torn. Going for the next one. I can just run through the middle because there's no darkness. Notice I dropped a thunderclap as I was running through. Just to make the damage income a little bit easier on those humanoid ads in the middle. If you've got a full rage bar, it helps them a lot. Darkness again. Spell reflect it. 12.5k. Good hit. Good spell reflect. Spell reflect is 25 rage, which is pretty expensive, but because he's hit so hard, you can manage it for sure. Lots of rage income for this. I throw an arcane bomb on these, silencing them. And then Entropius is out. This is phase two. Phase two is a fresh start for threat. Everyone's just fighting for threat. And oh my god, the warrior picked it up. Against all odds, when they said that you should put a paladin or a bear on it, the warrior has threat. And the warrior has bloodlust and battle shout. And rogue strike devastate. He is way ahead in threat. Everyone's trying to zug the boss as fast as possible. Watch out for those black spots on the ground. Don't stand in that. You need to dispel those dark fiends. Purge or dispel. And we are just pumping threat. Thunderclap is up. Demo shout is up. 55%. We are just slamming as much threat as possible so they can zug as much as possible. And despite what people said about warrior tanks in Burning Crusade, there is a warrior taking Muru and Sunwell. Look at this APM. Heroic strike. Shield slam. Heroic strike. Shield slam. Shield block. Heroic strike. What is this? He drops a super sapper charge. Revenge. Heroic strike. Devastate. He's got iron shield up again. He's got battle shot. He's shield walled. Shield wall. He's getting bounced around by some random ability. God knows what it is. The team is zugging as much as they can. People are dying left and right. The chain lightning does more and more damage as the fight goes, but boom, he is down. And that is Muru. Oh my god. The beginning of that fight, the phase two actually, it's not super intense, but every second that passes, the boss gets tougher and tougher. I'm going to skip ahead here. Let's skip to phase two again. I'll show that. It's pretty short compared to phase one. Okay. Where is it? Phase two, phase two. All right. Get into phase two. Ish. So whenever phase two is coming in, my bad. Boom. There you go. Whenever phase two is happening, uh, it's a fresh threat table, as though nothing has happened before then. So you might as well just have all three tanks go on it, and then whoever gets it gets it. You can also decide ahead of time who you're going to misdirect to. But the boss itself in Phase 2, Entropius, doesn't hit super hard compared to the Void Sentinels. It actually hits less hard. So if you can survive the Void Sentinels, you can definitely survive Entropius. The difference is all of the raid is going to be single target pumping into this. So it is a threat test. Look at my health up here in the top left on my portrait. How hard is he hitting me? Dodge. Parry. Miss. Dodge. Miss. Miss. 7.9. 8.4. 3.1. Parry. Yeah, so he's not hidden super hard. He doesn't hit as hard as Brutalis or even the Void Sentinels. It seems like he hits about the same as a Void Sentinel, maybe a little bit less. But the single target healers are going to be more focused on you than the off tanks. In phase one, the healing is distributed between raid heals on everyone who's taken a bit of damage. And then the three tanks who are managing some kind of adds. For phase two, you're going to have a main tank and then our bear tank went cat form for this phase of the fight. To squeeze out a little bit more DPS. I threw in a shield wall. Just because I had it up. And we were close to the kill. And that means the healers can focus on other people a bit more. Uh, if you do have shield wall. That's a really clutch cooldown. For this fight I would say shield wall is going to be bigger than recklessness. Just because I was able to get threat pretty much fine. 
and yeah, that's a super crazy and intense fight. It took us um, about 40 wipes, I think, to get the boss down. I think average guild is 51, so uh, don't be frustrated if your guild wipes on this boss a lot. You're supposed to wipe on this boss more than any other boss, so best of luck to you on that front. Try to be patient with each other as you're figuring things out. And real quick, I wanted to show you some of my gear loadout that I use for that fight. Just so you have a sense of the balance between mitigation and threat. Here's a Brent. Hello, my name is Brent. Hello. Okay. Always gauntlets of enforcement. Man, these gloves are heckin' good. Basically, never take them off. Girdle of the Fearless is a new badge uh, belt. Very good. Very good belt. I use this basically all the time now. Vengeful Gladiators plate leg guards. You could also wear the tank ones. These are good too. For the boss. Can't remember which one I used, but you could probably get away with either of these. Onslaught boots. Definitely one of these on. Big pickup. These just have so many different kinds of stats. It's amazing. Band of the Abyssal Lord. Super thick ring. It's really, really good. We also don't have improved fairy fire in our guild. So I need to have 9% hit. So let me check. I had a little bit more hit than this. What was the piece that was different? I had this on, yes. I did not have Vengeful Gladiators. I had Faceplate of the Impenetrable. This one's really nice. It has a lot more survivability than the PvP Helm. And if it's Muru, you're just taking so much damage from those Void Sentinels. This is good. This is a really good item for both hit and it has a bunch of stam and expertise. Onslaught shoulder blades, really, really good. Just heavy stats, really good threat on them as well. And I think I may have done this. And what did I do? I'm missing some hit somewhere. Dodge. Duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Was I under hit for that boss? It's possible. Was it this? I wasn't wearing the Batman shoulders for that fight. Let's just put on the full mitt and then I'll customize what I did. That's a good way to fix it. Alright, this is my full mitt set that I use for Brutalis. Shift 6, I have it hotkeyed. Great. Alright. And I know that I use this belt, these weapons. Man, the dragon scale encrusted long bait is a big step up in threat over the brutalizer. I wasn't really that excited by this weapon. Whenever I saw it, it looked kind of normal. It doesn't really have anything super crazy about it compared to like legendaries and so on. But for any other tank weapon in the game, this is a huge step up. Like look at the stat difference. 100 DPS on the brutalizer versus 108. That's a big step up. But then the, the real thing here is the speed. The speed of this weapon is 1.5. But it's not just 1.5. It has 25 haste. Which means it actually has more speed than the 1.5. And this has no haste and it's 1.6. What does that mean? That means that if you're in a high rage income scenario, you can heroic strike very, very fast. You can do it faster than you can with the brutalizer. And not only is it faster, but the top end damage is higher. 211 damage top end on the dragon skill encrusted long blade, and the brutalizer has a top end of 193. And you gain expertise. You do lose some defense, you need to make sure you're still defense cap wearing this. But holy hell, that is incredible. It's a very, very good sword. And as I've been using this sword, I've noticed that you have pretty sticky threat. The only thing that you have to make sure about is that you have your Heroic Strike and your other abilities on good hotkeys, so you can always hit Heroic Strike, and you can press other things. So a way to check this would be hit your Heroic Strike key, and then see if you can at the same time hit another key, like Devastate. I can hit both of these at the same time, because I use different fingers on my hand, right? I can even hit Shield Slam at the same time. I can hit... Heroic Strike, 
shield slam and shield block at the same time because they're all on different keys so check this with your mechanics if you want to really get the most out of your threat because one thing that i was really concerned about from muru and i'll honestly say about warrior in general in bc was well i don't know if warrior can tank you might need to put a bear on it for more threat and i was concerned because i don't want to hold my guild back i don't want to be saying, well, I'm, I'm going to force us to have a warrior main tank, but it, maybe it's not actually good and you're going to wipe because of it. No. Warrior is very hard to play. And more than the other tanks, you have to be able to hit more than one button at the same time. Like this. So, if someone is clicking their spells, a warrior tank is always going to underperform compared to a bear or a paladin who clicks their spells. So, if mechanics are not crisp and fast, then warrior is the worst tank but if warrior has good mechanics and has practiced the swiftness of being able to heroic strike and shield block at the same time and shield slam and devastate heroic strike at the same time you can take muru whenever we were planning doing the muru fight we were saying well who's gonna tank muru in phase two and our raid leader said well I think the correct answer is the bearer of the paladin. Well, I said that may be. Can I try it once? I just wanted to try it once. And you saw what happened. We got very ahead in threat. We were at what? 100% threat on the boss, and the second in threat had 77% of my threat. With about this for gear. Let's just fix it to what it was. Get this. I think I had this. I had these on for more hit. Yep. Get this. This has hit. This. And this. It was probably about this. So I have mostly mitt with a couple threat pieces. A threat ring, two threat trinkets, and some threat bracers, threat chest, and shoulders. But the rest of it is pretty much mitt. And with this, it was able to do threat just fine on the boss. What else did I do to mix in threat to stay ahead during the phase where everyone's blood lesson and using all their stuff? Super sapper charge. Being engineering helps. It gives you a little extra burst. This isn't a ton of damage, but the fun thing is this super sapper charge benefits from this. Increases the threat generated by your attacks by 15% while in defensive stance. Including this. This is an attack of a bomb. So using tricks like this and being able to pivot between commanding shout, which I use to tank the void sentinels. But then battle shout, which I use to tank with the last stand to tank Entropius. You can be a threat beast as a warrior. It is possible. It is hard. And you have to work hard for it. But it is possible. You need to be able to ride the lightning and figure out how much mid do I need to consistently not die to the mechanics. Assuming there isn't some other thing like a healer dies. If you can live consistently, then you can itemize for a little bit of a threat budget. So for this boss, I did maybe a three... Four, five, six, a six threat piece budget. Still with the shield, still with the mid helm, which the meta socket difference is pretty big, plus the helm enchant. The helm choice is a very big one. We were able to hold threat just fine. So phase one was about control, being in the right place at the right time, picking up the void sentinels, spell reflecting whenever they were casting their void blast thing. And then for phase two, making sure that we arcane bomb our little group of void spawns that come out. And then just going full ham on the boss. So hit that blood rage, hit that battle shout, make sure your iron shield is up. If your health is looking good, you can super sapper charge. And then be sure to use your defensives. So last stand at some point and shield wall at some point. Because these are tools that the paladins and bears do not have. And they're very good. One of the nice reasons that you might do a warrior tank to MT Illidan, for example. 
Another note here, always have greater root of warning on your uh, chest. This is a very, very good item. Pretty expensive, but it lasts for an hour and it persists through death. So it's very much worth it. And then I was starting all the pulls with the greater ward of shielding. This isn't going to last until phase two, but it's a nice way to soften the incoming damage for the start of the fight as you get it all set up. Well, hope you all found this guide useful. Muru is a really cool boss. It's a very tough fight. It's going to take you a bunch of wipes, but once you're done, you can take a nice picture with your guild and feel very proud of each other. I will say downing Muru felt better than any other boss in the game, and it was on par with Kel'Thuzad in vanilla because it felt like we beat the game. Our guild still has to do kill Jaden, but uh, Muru is such a really tough boss that it felt super rewarding to be able to down it. So remember that during progression. During progression, you will wipe, but the more you wipe, the more satisfying the kill will be when you finally get it. Hope y'all found this useful. From me, Brent, ancestors watch over you. Good luck on your Muru fight.